In this lesson, we'll take a look at masking hair, which can be a pretty challenging thing. Um, usually have to work with a number of different techniques to, depending upon the subject, and it also depends upon where you're placing that subject. If you're compositing them into a new background, that background's gonna have an effect on you know, the sorts of techniques that you're gonna use to get the most believable mask of the hair. So we take a look here at uh, Aaron here, this portrait of him in the studio, and I'm gonna just toggle over and take a look at my channels here to see what I'm working with right off the bat. What we're gonna need, for the most part, to start with is a decent selection of of him, and I'm gonna go ahead and just use the quick selection brush to kind of get, you know, a rough selection around him. You know, basically what I'm looking for with this, I'm not worrying too much about his hair, but you know, kind of getting around the edges of his shoulders here and the top of the shirt, just kind of taking a look that I'm not losing anything there. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and use a lasso. I don't really want this quick selection brush to be the thing that's making my selection around the hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda, you know, cruise around this bit here and subtract those, these sections of hair from his selection. Because these bits in here all have some transparency where we're seeing through to the background back there. And I wanna be able to preserve some of that for my next technique. I don't really want, uh, <clears throat> I don't really want this selection to be so tight um, along the hair, but you know this area in here is fine around him. So I'm just making some selections here. And this little zone in here is a little troublesome, so I'm just gonna get a selection of that, and that's looking pretty good. Good, that's a good place to start right there. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna go to Image, Calculations, I'm gonna blend the red to the blue, multiply looks pretty good. This is where I, I look at this as I zoom in on the hair and I compare, so multiply gets a darker and I really wanna try to preserve some of these wispy bits back here. I don't necessarily wanna like push those away. So I'll look at multiply, I'll look at color burn, you can see that kinda eliminates some of those back there. Linear burn, I'll compare linear burn to multiply. Uh, linear burn's nice because it <clears throat> helps to darken down this area right off the bat for us. So I'll say go ahead create a new channel for us. And since I have the selection going on our new alpha channel over here, I can go ahead and I can fill that channel with a black. And I'm gonna go ahead and invert that channel so that we're working with the correct mask look here of uh, what we don't want in black and what we want in white. I'll zoom in and take a closer look at his hair here. And this is where I can start finessing it with say an overlay brush and you know paint out some of these areas. Preserving, I wanna preserve some of this transparency through here, but anywhere where I feel like it isn't a transparent zone, uh, I can get rid of. If I'm unsure, if I'm looking here and I'm not quite sure, I can click the eyeball on here with the RGB where it shows me the original image as well as the mask that I'm working on. And with that, I can kind of look around here and, and you can see there's some areas here where you know it's punching through. We're seeing this green mask here through his hair, which is what we want. Um, little bits here we'll have to add to in the next step, but that's looking pretty good for the most part, uh, right off the bat, working with this mask. I'm gonna go ahead and command click that alpha channel and we'll take it into the select and mask tool. I wanna throw him on uh, this overlay utility so we can see this effect. And we'll go ahead and, and get the refine edge brush and I'm gonna bring that brush into some of these select areas like down in here and paint in that area. And that seems to be helpful. And in order to kind of tell Photoshop, hey, leave this area with some transparency, I'm gonna paint along the outside edge of his hair here, which indicates to Photoshop that I'm looking for these bits to have some transparency to them. So generally, I'm kind of leave it alone. Areas where I may want to you know, paint back in the original pixels, I can do that uh, with this brush and paint in some of these bits here that it looks like it's trying to mask for me. Good, that's looking pretty good. I might come along the edge of this, his neck here just to make sure we don't have any bleed. <clears throat> I'm gonna feather that selection just the tiniest little bit, 0.2, and I'm gonna make sure I choose layer mask here and I click OK. Looking good. I'm gonna get back here to my layers. You can see I have this layer mask of him. You know, a lot of times when you're working with hair masks, you're not gonna be able to get every single hair. You have to be okay with letting some go here and there. 
Uh, but we can get, you know, pretty close. So I'm gonna drop him into this new scene. I don't need him here any longer. Here he is in this new environment. I'll go ahead and give it a crop just to kind of clean things up from the get-go. That'll help a bit. So we're putting him in this new environment. And some of the problems that we see is we have this sort of white halo in some of these darker areas behind him, this white halo that we'll need to get rid of. One thing I need to do is I need to make sure that I blur my background appropriately. So I can come here to Gaussian Blur and choose a blur that would make sense for this focal length. I'd say, you know, it should have a pretty decent amount of blur because even on him, behind his ear here, it starts to blur out. So, you know, I don't want to take it too far. I want there to be some believability there, but I couldn't say okay there. That's looking pretty good. One technique I can use is I can double up this layer, and on the bottom layer, I can shift it to a blending mode that will help these pixels blend in a little bit more. And if I am on the Move tool and I hold Shift equals, I can toggle through various blending mo modes to see what those look like. In this case, I know that I'm probably going to be on Linear Burn here. You can see before, after, helps to kind of fill in some of the tone of the hair as well as blend in these areas. Down in here, I'll show you before. You can see this sort of white halo, and then after. That does a pretty good job right there. Some other things I might want to do to a shot like this, get a new blank layer and use a clipping group, clipping mask to it. I can use a foreground, a transparent bit of black gradient and paint in here and change that to overlay mode so it adds a little bit of sort of shadowing around him, like so. The opacity down, you can see without and then with just adds a little bit a little bit more shape around him with a little bit of this uh, sort of gradient. Build it up on each side. There we go. You can see before, after. Good. And the only other thing I'd probably do is something like this would be to activate some sort of curved dialogue and maybe just the tiniest bit of contrast. I'll brighten him up a hair and just pump a little bit of contrast in there. Almost like he's standing, you know, on a deck and being photographed in some nice light, and this is the you know a different background that's behind him. But generally, what we're looking for with you know these sorts of hair masks is to preserve quite a bit of this fuzzy these fuzzy hair bits back there, and we can do that with a number of these techniques, you know, including doubling up a layer and switching its blending mode underneath. Um, that tends to have a, a good effect, and you have to kind of experiment. Depends upon the background that you're working with in the end. Uh, but generally, this is what we're talking about with uh, masking hair is to, you know, get a good selection of, you know, the base area, in this case, sort of this inside area of, of Aaron, and then working with letting some of the gray pixels appear in the hair and finding an appropriate blending mode uh, that helps to preserve some of that information.